I mean, come on, look at me. Last year, I weighed 400 pounds. I sat on a chair, couldn't breathe, and I was still working more than anybody and getting the best gigs. And little skinny guys with long hair and the girls going, ooh, ah, couldn't get the same gigs I was getting. Why was that? Because I was doing the extra 20% over the 80%, Mm -hmm. even when I wasn't totally on the top of my game. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it's all about. You know, that's missed opportunities. Man, oh man, that was just one nugget of wisdom that Billy delivered during this episode. Uh, You're going to love it. He goes on a roll talking about uh, his version of the 80-20 rule. And it's a lot different than anything you've ever heard about this 20% versus 80% thing. Anyway, it's just golden about how he has built a career and done things that a lot of other average artists aren't able to accomplish. So this is part two of our series on missed opportunities in music marketing. So pull up a chair and let's dive in. This is the Music Marketing Podcast, episode 123. I'll start it up here. Hey, by the way, this is fun. Isn't it? Is it? Seem like old times? Way better. Good old times. <laughs> That's It's new times. New times are Good better. Good new times. All right. Well, as is always the case when you and I get on uh, the microphone and hit the record button, the time just flies by because we always embellish the things that we talk about. It's looking like we're going to have to do a part two. So another missed opportunity from a marketing perspective is... Um, I think it's great when uh, I think more and more bands are getting more proactive and realize they have to post things on social media and, you know, people are doing Facebook lives and posting on Instagram or whatever. But a missed opportunity, and you don't have to do this every time, but the one missed opportunity is including a specific call to action with many of your social media posts. So you might go on Facebook Live and play a song. You might um, do some sort of an update of you in the studio, but Try to get in the habit of asking people to do things. That's what it's called a call to action in marketing, a CTA. I want to be clear, though, that call to action does not have to be buy my music or some kind of a me, me, me type of thing. It could just be simple as, hey, what do you think about this? Leave a comment. Hey, if you like what you heard, share it with a friend. Just like ask people to do something. If you've got them engaged and you're interacting with them, have you taken the time to post something? How can you turn it into a call to action so there's more of a transaction, a social transaction, I should say, that goes on there, which then can lead to financial transactions? How does that sound to you, Billy? Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that, again, missed opportunities is taking an opportunity to like let the people that you're interacting with on social media help you to create the show for that evening or that week and say, hey, you know, what songs do you think we should be doing this week? Or like sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually play a new song and say, this is a new song we're working on. Do you guys think we should do it Thursday? You know, kind of thing. And that that's always a lot of fun. So, yeah, I think you can I, turn anything into a question. I mean, even if it's yep. you know, whether it's like, what should we play this weekend? But also if you're debuting a new song or maybe giving people a snippet of a, of a current song, whatever the theme of that is, maybe it's lost love, maybe it's a, a party song, whatever the topic of that song is or your particular update ask people so when's the last time you had a great party or what's your favorite song to listen to when you're doing x y or z or when you're wanting to get romantic or whatever the topic is but ask a question that's relevant to whatever it is that you're sharing and ask people to comment and engage with you totally absolutely i i I totally 100 percent agree with that and uh also you know uh something that's really i talk about like a missed opportunity of social media is at the beginning of the night, let's say if we're going to be there uh, setting up or we're in the first show and there's people there, I will tell people to get on their social media and tell their friends, hey, I'm down here. Come on down and meet me here. Mm-hmm. Think about that. That's one thing I always say. I'll tell people right at the beginning of the show or when we're setting up or if there's people milling around, I'll say, hey, everybody get out your cell phones right now and point at the stage. We're watching these guys. They're fantastic. You need to come down here now. Here's my address. Oh, very and cool. Get yeah. more people down to the show, man. A couple things that related to that. Again, I, th- one of the hottest things going right now is 
live streaming video. I mean, Facebook Live has been pretty hot for the past year. Now, uh, you know, Instagram has live video. Now they've added IGTV, which is another kind of vertical formatted version of YouTube. So there's all sorts of video opportunities, but like an hour before your gig uh, at a show, go live and say, hey, we're really looking forward to playing tonight, like reminding people. And then you want to hear one other brilliant idea about Facebook Live? Billy? I do. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm actually going to write this down. Are no. you on the edge of your seat? I am. <laughs> okay. So this friend of mine started this monthly music jam a few months ago, and I was invited to be the MC. And so one of the early months, it was you know, sparsely populated, but he was thinking of uh, ways to get the word out. And there were still about a dozen, 15 people or so there. Um, and great musicians were collaborating and all this stuff. He gave me a suggestion. I went up on the, on the mic and said, hey, who has you here has a smartphone? You know, everybody's hand goes up. I said, who has face, the Facebook app? All right, everybody, if we all go live on Facebook for this next song or at some point tonight, we will exponentially reach a lot more people. I mean, it's one thing, I'll go Facebook live, but what, what if you had half the room or most of the room broadcasting live on Facebook, all their friends were seeing this event that they were at. I thought that was just really brilliant how you can have an effect and have a reach outside of the people that are in the room with you at the time. Missed opportunities. Brilliant. <laughs> so. Genius. It really is. I mean, and it's that simple. Mm-hmm. See here, that's the whole thing about missed opportunities. Let's face it. You know this about me, and, and I'll share it with people that don't know this about me. I am a gigantic proponent of the 80-20 rule, the Pareto principle. You know, it's like 80% you know, of, of, of the value comes from 20% of the things, and then like 80% of the crap comes from... 20% of the stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. A lot of people, and this is the whole golden goose of missed opportunities, and this I've spent my entire life studying this, is that we all have to do certain things. We all have to learn how to play guitar, you know? We all got to buy instruments. We all got to tune up and get strings and drum heads. We got to get decent clothes. We have to have a vehicle. We have to uh, get to the gig, run sound. We all got to do, that's 80%. Does it matter? And you know what the 80% is going to get you? The musician's version of minimum wage, guys. This is the bottom line. So the big difference between a band that's making it, and I'm going to be really cruel and honest here because that's what I do. I call it as I see it. So please don't be upset with me. But the big difference a lot of times between a $400 band and a $4,000 band is the 20%. Because that $400 band has to do that first 80% and they stop there. That's as far as they go. And they don't do anything else. And then for every little percent you go above, that's when the money comes in. And as it gets smaller and smaller as you go to the top, that's when the big bucks come in. It's amazing. I've seen it for 40 years, everybody. I mean, come on, look at me. Last year, I weighed 400 pounds. I sat on a chair, couldn't breathe, and I was still working more than anybody and getting the best gigs and little skinny guys with long hair and the girls going, ooh, ah, couldn't get the same gigs I was getting. Why was that? Because I was doing the extra 20% over the 80%, mm-hmm. even when I wasn't totally on the top of my game. Mm-hmm. So that's really what it's all about. You know, that's missed opportunities. That missed opportunities is, Bob, we got a book here. Man. And in fact, we talked about uh, possibly, uh, so far as it related to venues and booking, having a whole separate show with mm-hmm. uh, maximizing your gig potential, right? And it's all about that 20%, man. Yeah. You know that song, All About That Bass? Well, in this case, all about that 20%, 20%. 20%. 20%. It doesn't have, the, <laughs> doesn't have the same ring to it. Yo, it's all about that 20%. Yo, 20% is what I'm talking about. Yeah, 20%. Uh, 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 20%, boy. Yo, uh, uh. All right. I think we should stop feel, that right now. I, that's, yeah. Can you feel the rhythm, man? Yes. Can you feel the rhythm in my rhyme, dude? <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm really groovy, aren't I? I'm hip. <laughs> I think I'm feeling a little bit too much. Uh, well, but, but I hope in the middle of the humor, people really grasped what I was saying there. Hey, it's Bob here taking a quick break from the show to ask you an important question. Could you use some coaching or consulting with your music career? Maybe it's to help you book more gigs or to get more clear about your marketing strategy. Maybe you need some help prioritizing and knowing what to put your limited time and energy and money, what you need to be focusing on. Well, if this interests you at all, reach out to me and we can start a conversation about how you can get some one-on-one time with either me or Billy or maybe even the both of us. 
The first step is reaching out and letting me know that you're interested. You can do that in a couple of ways. If we're connected on Facebook or Twitter, to send me a personal message if you'd like to get that conversation started. You can also email me right to my personal inbox. It's bob at bob-baker.com. So there's a hyphen or a dash between my first and last name there. Bob at bob-baker, B-A-K-E-R.com. So just reach out. And we'll discuss what your needs are. We'll talk about the fees and all that good stuff. And let's see if we can help you a little bit more personally beyond the podcast here. All right. And now back to the show. So when it's funny, this 80-20 thing that you're just talking about kind of ties into the, the only other point that I was going to make here. Great. Uh, and uh, but synchronistically. And so here's what I wrote down. It says, and this is a missed opportunity. So people are always like looking for the next new thing and the next, fr- I, need, I need to try something fresh. However, here's, my, here's what I wrote out. Noticing what's working and doing more of what has proven to be successful. Ooh, it sounds yeah. simple, but I think yeah, a lot that's... of people just move on when they have a successful event and they try something new again instead of examining. Like whenever you have a successful gig, and I've been doing a lot more coaching and consulting more in the last six months than I have in the last 10 years. And so uh, this comes up a lot. So whenever somebody talks about a successful gig, I say, let's examine what elements made this successful. And I kind of force the person to spend time to identify the factors that made it a winning thing. It's like, awesome. So what can we do to reproduce this or use these elements in other ways for other events? You know, does that make sense? (laughs) And that is a giant missed opportunity because the bottom line is, let's say we have a really successful show. All right. Like, you know, and I mean, it just kills. Everybody wants it. But I've seen it so many times after band does that show for a year, they're bored of it. And they went, I'm just going to use this as an example. And they want to start making changes just for the sake of making changes. You know what I mean? And this is, again, where the 80 20 comes in. Fine. Keep the 80 percent that works. Take the 20 percent that's not working and get some new stuff. But don't throw out the 80 percent that works just because you're bored with it, because people like it. And and when it comes down to it, the bottom line is connecting with your audience, making them happy, making them want to come back. So yes, I totally agree with you. Do more of what works. And I think you actually flip those percentages. Isn't usually it's the 20% that's the most effective stuff that you do. And the 80% is the other stuff that's kind of so, so. Well, well, see, that's, that's what the beauty is of those numbers and percentages. Mm -hmm. It works in a lot of different angles. I, I don't use it in the traditional sense. Okay. I just like those if you want to get crazy about it, you could say two thirds, one third. OK, we could do that, too. Right. But I just like keeping it a 20. So I will flip it around sometimes where, like I'm saying, there's 20 percent of, of garbage in your show. Right. Get it out. That makes you sense. Know? Totally. Yeah. Why? Why take stuff out of the 80 percent that works? Find new stuff that works. And you know what happens eventually? This is a funny thing. Eventually, some of that new stuff that you put, it becomes your better 80 percent. Some of your better 80 percent moves over into the 20 percent garbage. Get that out then. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then it's time to move on. So the 80, 20 works both ways. But, yeah, there's the traditional way where 80 percent of your value comes from 20 percent of your work. And but there's also the other way of looking at it, too. You got to look at it in different ways. Right. We're just pulling these numbers out of our rears. And anyway, just to make a point, or, or whoever came No, no, these, these are the numbers, Bob. Oh, yeah, these are the actual numbers. These are the, I, I, have, I have studied this for many years, and I have, I have a, a PhD in numbers, Bob. It was not 19 and a half. It was 20%. Um, and just real quickly, we'll wrap up with this. So with one, one particular instance that stands out, one of my friends uh, who, I was, who was coaching for a short while, Ryan Marquez, he plays a lot of jazz stuff. So he did a night where he sold out two shows with this particular band, so I said, well, so why do you think this was so successful that you sold out two shows at this jazz club? He goes, one, it was a, it was a tribute to Michael Jackson, but they were all like jazz instrumental versions where they would take Michael Jackson riffs or themes, but then go off and do jazz versions, instrumental versions of them. So there was a theme, Michael Jackson's popular. Uh, he said a lot of the people in that band or who he collaborated with on that gig were active on social media, so they shared it a lot. And three, it was something that they rarely did. So they weren't going to be doing the same thing, maybe maybe never. And if they did again, maybe it might be two or three years. So it was a scarcity type of thing where you had to come to that show or you're going to miss it. And so just identifying those elements, that doesn't mean you have to do Michael Jackson over and over. 
again, but how can you do stuff that ties into the popularity of another artist? How can you collaborate with people that are active socially? And how can you create that scarcity and not do things that people can just catch it every weekend if they miss it? So things like that, identifying what are the factors that were successful in whatever it is that you did, how can we use those principles and and reproduce them, can do more of what's working, weed out what's not. That's my story, baby. That is absolutely (laughs) fantastic. And I mean, we could probably do uh, a whole year's worth of missed opportunity episodes, you know, (laughs) because as we're talking, I mean, I just got this brainstorm for a Facebook Live thing that I think I might want to try that I've never seen done before ever. And it just came to me being inspired by what you were saying. So it's just like, wow. So that that's a tease for a future episode because I, I have an idea for a Facebook Live thing. Maybe we should actually just do a do an episode on Facebook Live. So uh, that would be really cool, you know? Maybe we could like go best. live on Facebook and record the audio on actually, Skype. That's a great idea. We should really do that. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. So, All right. Well, we're going to wrap this one up. The question, how long was this 15-minute episode, Bob? <laughs> I think it was like 37 minutes. There I'm you not, go. No, I'm not sure. So, Billy, thanks. This is awesome. It's just like I just <laughs> feel so comfortable talking to you, and I hope our listeners uh, feel the same way. And so practicing what we preach, hey, wherever you're watching this, what do you think? What do you think about the missed opportunities that we talked about? Uh, any others that you'd like us to address in the future? If you can comment, do so. Uh, where can people find out about you, Billy? Where would you like them to go? Well, you know, these days, I've really been spending a lot of time trying to help people stay healthy. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess I'd like people, if, if you're interested in how I'm getting healthy and staying healthy, go check out my blog. I think we're going to do that today. So my blog is at billyislosingit.blogspot.com. And you can find out uh, what I do when I'm not doing full-time music. We'll, we'll leave the music stuff for Bob this week. All right, cool. You, and you can always go to thebuzzfactor.com to catch all my mar- our music marketing stuff. Podcasts, blogs, video clips, books, you name it. It's all there at thebuzzfactor.com. He's, he's really very good at this, guys. He really is. <laughs> very, very good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. We're going to wrap this one up for now, and we're going to be talking about gigs and all kinds of other stuff in upcoming episodes. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Billy. I love you, Robert. <laughs> I love you, William. <laughs> Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye, everybody. See you. Crazy.